Okay, thank you, Karen. Uh, thanks, everyone, for coming here. And uh, it's very exciting to talk about this one today. Uh, just as an expectation of uh, what, what you should come out of this with, um, static sites are still something that's a little bit unfamiliar to many. Um, so just if you come out of this session just with an understanding of what a static site is, how that might help in your WordPress setup, then uh, that would be great. All right, so a little bit about me. It's my little um, WordPress dating profile here. Uh, yeah, I, I left Australia when I was 20, traveled around the world, and did a bunch of um, sort of tech-related work for different places. And uh, here I am. OK, so um, static websites, we'll start off with what they are. OK, and then we'll move on to how you can go about getting one, um, how you can go about converting your WordPress site into a static site, and whether or not that's actually going to be suitable for the type of website that you've got. OK, so if you look at a static site and you look at a dynamic site, this is part of the what are they, um, you shouldn't really notice any difference when you're looking at it as a user. Visually, there's no difference. And again, looking at the code, no difference at all. So it's still a bit mysterious now. So what is, what is, what is a static site? What is the difference? All right, here's a little hint. If you've ever been to a, uh, a project hosted on uh, GitHub, and the URL is something.github.io, then you're looking at a static site there. But the real, the real guts of it, the real difference between a static site and a dynamic site is a static site is pre-generated. And we'll look at WordPress as an example here. So when you've got uh, your WordPress site and you create a post in your WordPress dashboard, that post content is living in the database. You've got a database. You may not be aware that you've even got a database. You just log into your WordPress and you add a post and your user visits your site and they see that. But what's going on behind the scenes is that they, they go to your page and it's making a request to your server and pulling this, this content out of your database. And all that takes, not lots of time, but enough time that it can be a problem for a heavily viewed site or a site that's got some performance issues because you've got lots of plugins and things running. Now, with a static site, you're getting rid of all that, all that time. There's, there's no time going and fetching different pieces of content from the server and doing other tasks in the background. As soon as a user goes to your page, boom, they've got the whole, the whole content right in front of them. Uh, in doing so, it uses very minimal resources. If you're hosting a static site and you get some media attention or you get linked to on front page of Reddit or something like that, uh, your site's not going to break a sweat. As opposed to if you've got a, a WordPress site and you haven't um, sort of planned for massive traffic and put it through tests, you can find yourself with a site that's offline. And it happened to a, a, a friend of mine running a charity last week. Um, they got media exposure in the UK, got some uh, television coverage, and their site's down. And that's the worst time because you've got all these people, you've got the media attention, and they're coming to a blank page. Um, there's lots of ways you can, you can mitigate that just within WordPress itself. Uh, most people that have been using WordPress for a while uh, use some, some caching plugins, some things that will help with uh, handling, handling traffic. Another advantage with a static site um, is you can, you can use that offline. So if you're a designer and you're building your WordPress site and you want to hand that to a, a client for approval or preview, you can put it on a USB stick, CD, if you still use CDs, hand it to them and, uh, and they can test the site out. You don't have to worry about um, you know, whether the site's still online and what sort of version they're going to see. You take a snapshot, you give it to them, and they can approve that. With, uh, with, I'm going to talk a bit later about a, a product that I make that allows you to take your WordPress site and turn it into a static site. And uh, one, of, one of my main customer groups are people that are worried about security, security of their WordPress site. And again, there's lots of ways you can mitigate security when you're running a WordPress site. Uh, but for a lot of people, if you're a digital agency, you might, you might have hundreds of sites 
but you still don't have the resources to hire a full-time you know, um, security expert for your company. And so when you've got uh, something that's so easily, easily customizable like WordPress, any of your clients can, if they've got access to their, to their site, they can go in and they can turn on plugins, they can download a plugin, they can copy and paste some random code they found on the internet. And that's, that's the beauty of WordPress. It's so easy to, to, uh, to add content, to, to get your site up, to modify it. But it comes with a lot of security implications. You know, no one's checking the code that the plugin, the plugin author made or the theme author made. Uh, and for a lot of us, it's not something we can do. Uh, I'm not a security expert myself. And my solution uh, back in the day to, to create my product was I don't want to have to deal with that security issue. So if I can take my WordPress content, keep it as it is, the beauty of, of rapid development, but then get rid of this whole security concern of hosting a WordPress site by taking it static, then that's great. And that's what I did. So the three main points of a static site, the security of mention, uh, performance, touched on it a bit where, uh, especially when you've got lots of load on your site, you've got you know, 10,000 people all at once. Uh, you can, you can test your current website, your web, WordPress website. You can go to some online uh, load testing tools that will simulate what it's going to be like when 100 people or 1,000 people or 10,000 people all visit your site at once. And you may be interested to find uh, how quickly it, it will fail or it will start getting slower and slower to respond to each request. So the page is going to load slower. Uh, and we all know that um, slow page loads do not make for happy users. Once, you're, once you've got a static site, you can, you can throw crazy amounts of traffic at it, and it, again, you won't break a sweat. Uh, the last thing that I really like, uh, one of my passions is, is open source, low resource computing, uh, you know, sort of like enabling, uh, enabling people that may not be uh, as fortunate to have the luxuries you have in Australia, um, or even if you're in Australia, not everyone has the money to, uh, to spend on hosting, to spend on latest computers, all these sort of things. And static sites are really, really great in enabling you to, to I don't know, I guess, you can, have your, you can have your really nice looking site that you built with WordPress and you put all your features into it, uh, but you don't need to pay for hosting at all. There are lots of really good sites, uh, hosting providers out there at the moment where you can put a static representation of your website and host it for free, um, and with some extra benefits as well. I'll cover some of, some of those providers later on. Uh, it's not the, the primary users of my, of my software, not um, you know, the ones looking for that, for that free hosting, but I, I think it's a really exciting aspect. You know, I've paid over the years, the last 10, 15 years, paying for hosting for WordPress, it would go up to I know from $40, $250 a month, depending on the site. And when you can pay zero for that, that means you can focus those costs on more important things. And again, if, if someone's looking at your site, it looks visually exactly the same, whether it's static or dynamic, but you don't have to pay for it, that's a big, a big bonus. Uh, just to reiterate, security-wise, uh, if you're hosting your site statically, you're not worried about your database credentials, you're not worried about your file permissions, uh, and you're not worried about any vulnerabilities in plugins or, or anything like that. About the only thing you have to worry about is your main username and password for wherever you're hosting your site. All right, so uh, this one might be a little bit more technical, but for anyone who is already using a caching plugin for WordPress, like W3 Total Cache. Uh, caching is great, and it solves a lot of uh, solves a lot of problems. Um, but for in order for for caching to work, though, you've usually got to have uh, one person at least visit that page and and uh, you know run through it, allow it to do all that that fetching. In the, back, in the back end, hitting the database, pulling your content out. And from that point on, subsequent visitors will, will receive that, that cached version. And 
So while you might have a really big site and it's really busy, um, some really large sites I've worked on uh, utilize W3 total cache. And but being that the site was so heavy, if ever uh, the page content changes or something, something changes on the site that requires uh, a non-caching request to happen, then that could be enough to really slow down that site again and cause you, cause you pain. So here are some of those providers that uh, I mentioned before. Some that offer free hosting for your static site. And some of the ones in the, in the top uh, free layer are ones that have a free tier. So something like uh, Amazon Web Services, uh, you can host with their uh, S3. Uh, it's just like a simple storage solution. And uh, kind of like something like Dropbox. You put files in it, and people can access them. Uh, Specifically with this one, they, allow, they make it very easy to, to host your site using that. Uh, Netlify is a really, big, um, a really big thing at the moment. They've just got an extra $30 million in funding, and they're very happy for you to host your site for free on them, provided it's static. Uh, their, their biggest market is not straight static sites at the moment. It's more something called the, the Jamstack, which I'll, I'll talk about in a bit more. Uh, but it's totally fine for a static version of your WordPress site. Um, very fast, we've got a global CDN, so you put your static site on Netlify, and your users in Australia, your users in America, will get the best response time available to them. Uh, GitHub, um, GitHub been in the news last week for a big outage, it affected the whole world, it felt like. Uh, but they're still a good option for hosting your static site. Um, GitLab, the more open source of them and Bitbucket from the Australian company Atlassian. Uh, pretty much all the cloud providers out there, so um, Google App Engine, Azure, all support uh, static site hosting um, within their free tiers in some form. Uh, you've also got cool things like Firebase, and for anyone that remembers GeoCities back in the day, uh, the, new, the new, um, new form of that, NeoCities, you can host a static site uh, for free on, on them too. And with almost all of these options, uh, you're not limited to using their, um, you know, their internal domain name. So if you've already got your site on, uh, you know, www.myshoppingsite.com, that's fine. You can point your domain at these free, free hosts, and your users won't know the difference, except they might be getting the page faster. Uh, some other options that are usually paid tiers are uh, content delivery networks. So uh, Bunny CDN, Key CDN. Anything like that uh, all lends themselves quite well to static site hosting. Uh, one more I'll throw in there, which is if you're wanting to be a bit geekier and, and support a cool organization is um, OpenBSD Amsterdam. They'll give you a server for $60 a year, $10 of which they donate to, um, to open source, and uh, super secure, super minimal out of the box, kind of a nice way to host your static site. And again, you're a bit, if you want to be in control, uh, all these other options, the free options there at the top, they're hosted platforms, and so you can host your site for free there, but you're, you, can't, you can't have access to your own log files. You can't really get in there. If you you know, want to get geeky with it, then uh, a cheap server, uh, a cheap but solid server like the OpenBSD Amsterdam is a good option. You can install whatever you want on there, host a static site, but still have um, full control over the server. And one last point, which is kind of close to my heart. So last year I was doing a, a charity in the Philippines with my partner, and it was all around uh, it was all around plastics cleanup and that sort of thing, which if you've been to Southeast Asia is a big problem. And it makes me think more about everything that we spend money on. And hosting is just another one of those. So $40 a month for hosting, it's, it's, it's not bad. For anyone that's working in Australia, you can afford that. But in order to pay that, it might be an hour, it might be two hours of your of your wage, um, and that's two hours of time per month uh, that you might be dedicating just to pay for your hosting. And you don't need to. So that money can go somewhere better. Or take two, two hours off work each week. All right, this one's going to be more, uh, it's just a concept to throw out there. It's a, quite a geeky sort of thing. So IPFS is something called the Interplanetary File System. It's really cool. And uh, it's, you think of it kind of like, 
you know, Bitcoin, blockchain, stuff like that, where uh, you can, it's a distributed decentralized network. And you can also get a static site and put it on here. And this is not something that most of us are going to be looking at doing. It's not going to be a business case for us. But it's cool to think about in terms of, uh, you know, when you're in a country, uh, we've seen the YouTube outage last week was uh, Pakistan trying to block sites for their users. Um, you know, hopefully so far we're not getting many sites blocked in Australia that we want to visit. But if that case ever happens, then you can put a static site on something like IPFS and you're, you're kind of uh, resilient to those kind of uh, uh, governmental controls. So when you've got your, your WordPress site and you are uh, publishing it out as a static site, now I would just say here that when you're, when you're going static site option with your WordPress site, you're not giving up on WordPress. You keep using WordPress for what it's great for, which is the content management, the plugins, the themes, the community. But your, your code goes out and it's all static HTML files. Just files, just files in a folder. You'll have your HTML files, your CSS, your images, your JavaScript. And you can use a, a version control software, something like Git, and you can, uh, you can have a nice history of each, each time you publish your site out. Uh, you can put a name against it. You could be, uh, you know, this is the time we added the uh, you know, the new widgets section. And then uh, you've, you've made three more publishes since that day. And then you realize, oh, crap, we, uh, we made a massive mistake and we lost, like, you know, all these images on our site. You can just quickly roll back to those versions prior because you've got an exact <laughs> snapshot of what your site was like at that point in time. So that's another benefit you get. Uh, the use case I see sometimes from uh, digital agencies, again with hundreds, maybe thousands of, of client sites going back 10 years. Uh, WordPress presents a challenge in that you've got a, you get a site from a client who is a great client, you love them and you build their website, but they don't need any more work on it. You know, there might be a small business and their site serves them fine, uh, or they're, you know, they're just not, they don't have the money to invest in it anymore. Uh, now, when, you're, when you've got their WordPress site, usually you're charging a monthly fee for maintenance and security a lot of the times. But if they don't want to pay that, you don't have to take their site down. Uh, so what you can do is, again, take a, take a sort of snapshot of it, turn it into a static HTML site, keep that up there, don't worry about security, don't worry about even hosting costs for them, and they get to keep their site. Okay, so there's a lot of probably new words on this screen, and this is just the, the many, many ways that you can take any, any website, whether it's a WordPress site or another one, and, uh, and convert it into a static site. So the first two, wget and HTD track, or HTD track are um, kind of built in, uh, either built in or easily installable tools for a lot of operating systems. And these are kind of command line, more geekier tools. Um, HTD track has uh, has a user interface a lot of the time, uh, and it's it's really um, really full featured and comprehensive in terms of making an archive of a website. Uh, Site Sucker is a tool for uh, Mac OS that I used to use many years ago, and that's you just put in the address of your site, click a button, and it'll pull it all down and, and create a static copy of that. It won't do, uh, as far as I know, I haven't checked recent versions. It won't do um, uh, rewriting of your of your URLs or all your links in your site, and so it, it's good for taking an offline copy of your site and giving it to someone, uh, but not so good for you know having a WordPress development server taking a static copy of that and then publishing it somewhere else. That's where uh, WordPress plugins, and that's where uh, one of one of those is a, a plugin that I create, and there's at least one more up to date uh, plugin specifically for WordPress that you install. <coughs> Put a couple of settings in, press a button, and it'll, it'll crawl through your site, extract each page, rewrite the links that you want uh, for your new site, and give you that static copy. And there's also um, at least three companies that are quite new and quite interesting out there at the moment. So Shifter, Stratic, and HardyPress. And they're kind of like a hybrid approach. They're a WordPress-specific hosting company, but they serve the content statically. So 
you log in and you, you manage your site through them like you would any WordPress site, uh, but behind the scenes, they're, they're making a static copy of it to serve. And they address some of the issues automatically that you would otherwise have to manually uh, work around taking a WordPress site to a static site. Uh, yeah, really quite interesting. Um, so a, a bit more secure in that sense. Uh, last on that list there is the uh, Jamstack and WordPress. And I mentioned before Jamstack is, is something that uh, Netlify's um, big user base is, is about. And the, the Jamstack, here we go. Uh, Jamstack stands for JavaScript APIs and Markup. So uh, kind of like the, you know, the trendier way to build a website uh, you know, the, these days is to have a, a totally sort of offline site. So it's, it's, a, it's a static site in nature. But for things like getting the content, for uh, having user, user comments, for having e-commerce, or anything, anything that's kind of a bit uh, dynamic in the site, you'll hit an API from various services and use those on your static site. And in the case of WordPress, it plugs into a lot of these uh, Jamstack setups. Um, so uh, uh, you know, like a modern uh, front-end framework or static site generator like uh, Gatsby JS is a, is a common one. Uh, you can use your WordPress site as a data source. So WordPress exposes an API since I don't know how many versions ago, which makes it really easy for you to take your content from WordPress and use it on another site. Uh, in that case, you're not going to be getting the, the theme, so it's not going to necessarily look the same as what your WordPress looks like. You'd just be purely using it for adding and managing your content, which is, again, what WordPress is really good at. So to go static from WordPress, for, for the majority of WordPress sites that are out there, I would say that they're uh, fairly easy to do with the only consideration needing uh, is to deal with your contact form. Most websites will have at least one really dynamic aspect, which is your contact form. And when you've no longer got a, a server-side language on your server, you, you don't have PHP on there anymore once you go static. So there, there's nothing to sort of handle the submission of your contact form. And there's a few good solutions out there. Uh, if you're hosting with Netlify, all you need to do is add an extra attribute, I think it is, to your, to your form. So if you're comfortable to go into the source code, you can add a little attribute to your, to your form, and they'll automatically intercept Anytime a user submits your form, and they'll email it off to your um, email address of choice. It's really, really nice. Uh, in other cases, there's some um, plugins you can get for WordPress that will automatically convert your contact form 7, which is a plugin that uh, almost all WordPress users are using for their contact form. And it will convert that to uh, submit to a service like uh, Form Spree, which is, again, a remote sort of form processing. Uh, other sort of dynamic things you might have on your site, uh, comments. So comments more for a blog, uh, business sites maybe not so much, but uh, even when you're using WordPress in its default state, a lot of people have been using uh, third-party comments systems like Discuss uh, for some years. And that works just the same way on a static site because it's not running on your server, it's running somewhere else. Um, it's, it's very seamless. Uh, search is a, is a bit of a trickier one. So usually your, your WordPress site, you've got built-in search in your theme, and it hits your database, and it's, you know, it's got a powerful text search. Uh, so to, to get that same functionality uh, with a static site, it needs to know the content of your site first, and it needs to sort of index that for easier searching. And that's where a company at the moment, Algolia, is doing a really good, um, a really good job, and they're really popular and quite easy to, to integrate. Uh, Options are something like Google Custom Search, I think it's called, uh, where you basically uh, have a mini version of Google running in your site. E-commerce, you're not limited when you go static with your WordPress site. You can use uh, something called Snipcart, which is a really nice uh, JavaScript-based sh uh, shopping cart that works with their hosted platform, does all the payments and everything. Um, and last one there, user accounts. So if you're running a membership site, that might be more of an issue. There are solutions out there, again, uh, popularized with the, the Jamstack. Uh, so thanks to the Jamstack, we're getting a lot of solutions to the typical 
static site uh, as well. All right, so <coughs> static site generators, uh, I'll skip, skip a bit. My, my product I'm going to talk about in a moment is called WordPress Static Generator. We know the, this from the, the talks topic. And there's a lot of static site generators out there that you don't, you don't use WordPress at all. You just start out of the bat with uh, one of these tools. And usually the way they work is you'll manage your content just as a, as a bunch of files. And these might be markdown files, just text files. You can just open them up in text edit, make some changes. Uh, usually run a command on the command line, and it'll, it'll um, produce your whole uh, They're generally really fast, and they're generally something you've got to run from the command line, which can be a bit, it can be a bit int intimidating if you're used to WordPress. Uh, so they're, I guess they're more popular with, um, with uh, uh, those that really want to pursue a, a you know, development path. Uh, if you want to see, there's, there's static site generators in pretty much any language out there. So if you like PHP, if you like Ruby, if you like Python, uh, there's one out there that will do the job, and they're getting better and better. And you can go to staticgen.com there and uh, see which ones are the most popular. Why we don't use them? Again, uh, it might be that 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 uh, that was fear, or just you just don't want to have to deal with the command line, which is uh, understandable. Um, and that can be a, a, a big turnoff for using a static site generator. Uh, WordPress is still brilliant at what it does. It's what is it, 30 something percent of the web powered by WordPress? It's not you know it's not just some random chance that people installed it. It works. It works. Great. It's great for content. Uh, and the plugin ecosystem, this community, really good. Uh, ease of collaboration, meaning if you're a distributed team or you're outsourcing some work, you've got content writers uh, all over the globe, it's very easy to just give them an a, a invite to your WordPress site. They can come in, they can have their different user levels, you can have editors, publishers, and such. And when you've got a static site generator, you're dealing with those, uh, you know, those files on a folder, which if you want to start sharing those around, then you're looking at putting those under version control, sending like a link to GitHub to your designer to update some text, and uh, it's not as easy. Uh, the static site generators out of the box, they're, they're quite good. They've got their, um, their ways. You, know, you put your content in this folder, your text files, you put your theme over here, uh, run a command, generates it. And they're all designed to do that really well out of the box. But it gets tricky once you want to start doing customizations. The kind of things that in WordPress you might just install a plugin. You want to show a, a list of the, I don't know, the top, the top 10 posts, but you want to filter out a certain category. That's fairly easy to do now in WordPress. But with a static site generator, that could be fairly easy to it could be like, you know, a lot of customization to get it working. Uh, and again, back on the command line, these days if you're doing WordPress, and I meet a lot of people that are able to, to build really good sites without ever leaving the browser. You know, they're not having to edit any, any code uh, with an editor. They're using something like Divi or Elementor, and it works fine. All right, so this is artwork done by, by, done by a developer here, so it's, it's a bit rainbowy. Uh, so I created this product about seven years ago. It just it solved a problem for me. I was doing a lot of WordPress sites for clients, and performance and security were an issue. I thought, oh, there must be an easier way. So I created this, and it got some users. It's on the WordPress uh, repository. And then I kind of you know, I got out of WordPress development. I you know, did other things for many years. And then uh, I noticed it still had all these users, and I wanted to do something uh, with open source still. I was looking for a project to contribute to and realized, oh, okay, I've still got one and it's got all these users, but it's in serious need of a, a refresh. So uh, this is my, my full-time thing now. I develop this and uh, try and make it as useful to the, to the users as possible. And it takes the, the, the best of both worlds. So you've got your, your WordPress tool for your content, your collaboration, but you're getting rid of the security and the performance issues by publishing out to a static site. And those icons you see there on the, the brightly colored area are some of the deployment targets that you can use. So you install this plugin, 
uh, choose where you want to host your, your new static site. And this can be your own server via FTP, um, Bitbucket, GitLab, Bunny, C, uh, Bunny CDN, all these ones there. It can be anywhere that you can put a static site. And in general, anywhere that you can put a dynamic site, you can put a static site. So if you're comfortable with your DigitalOcean setup or you know, whichever, whichever hosting it is that you like, you can just put your files in there and it'll work. Uh, I'll just give you a quick, quick preview of what the, um, what the interface looks like. Well, it's a bit full on there, lots of fields and things, but uh, that's, that's one of the benefits of it. You get a lot of control over um, not just taking your current site and putting it out as a static site, but you can modify a few things in between there. For example, if you've ever looked in the, the source code of your WordPress page, you might find a lot of stuff that you wouldn't put in there if you were making your site by hand. If you're hand coding your, your site, you wouldn't end up with all these um, uh, maybe canonical links have a purpose, but you've got a lot of uh, other things. If you're not using the WordPress API, you don't need links to the API in there. Uh, you may not be using feeds. So there's certain plugins that may get rid of, uh, you know, what I, I, I dare to call a bit of cruft in your, in your um, WordPress generated code. Uh, but this plugin also allows you to, to um, strip out things, strip out things you don't need, and um, that's an optional step. You can also rewrite your paths. So one of the things that I really uh, was interested in doing was generating, using WordPress to generate websites, but kind of not telling the world that that's what I'm using uh, for various reasons. One is if, you're, if your site's easily identifiable as a WordPress site, it's very easy for um, bots to scour the net and say, okay, this is a WordPress site, so I'm gonna start attacking the usual points that I think it's With, uh, with the plugin I wrote, I allowed to rewrite all of those paths. So you're stripping out the usual WordPress identifiers, but you're also doing things like changing all of your, all of your links that say, you know, WP content slash uh, theme slash divi slash whatever, and totally making those whatever you want. Uh, also with uh, changing your URL structure, so you can completely rewrite the URL and have, you know, relative links or absolute links, which generally you can't uh, easily do with WordPress. And on that, one, one more example there is uh, for that squeezing that extra ounce of performance out. When you've got those really long links through your site, uh, they, they start to add up. It's not a big amount of, uh, of space, but you know, these days you really want your site to be as fast as possible. And if you want to go crazy and get your source code as small as possible, then this can be an option where you can you know, remove half of that. Alrighty. So I think we're going to start doing some questions and answers here if, uh, if anyone's got anything. 